All right, so I just came across this article from the Wall Street Journal titled, Americans are still spending like there's no tomorrow. And this article basically confirms what we already know, which is people have lost their minds. And I know times are tough right now. I know people are tired, but it's no excuse just to go blow everything just because you're discouraged. According to the article, August spending was at 5.8% from the previous year, but that's not even what is most concerning. When you look at the experience and entertainment industry, companies like Delta Airlines are posting record revenue and Ticketmaster sales are up 18% year over year. Yet the narrative that I always hear is, People can't afford their groceries or their bills because of inflation or because of other external factors that are outside of their control. And that's just not always the case as this article shows us. But I also don't wanna make light of that issue. I know people are feeling it right now. I know inflation is bad. Going to the grocery store and spending way more than we used to just sucks. I am definitely not immune to that. I'm feeling it too. But I just can't help but think that people are getting in their own way and overspending. And it's usually on stuff that they don't actually need. All right, and this article goes into a few specific examples of people just spending on stuff that they shouldn't be. And I wanna walk through each of these. All right, so the first example we have is Ibby who lives in New York City and he rents an apartment for 3,000 a month. And if he were to buy that same apartment, the mortgage would cost him 5,000 a month, which I think is a great idea. It makes sense to rent. He doesn't live in a market where it makes sense to buy. It's probably overpriced. It's a lot cheaper to rent. I think that's good, but that's where the good ends for Ibby. Because of that, instead of saving for a down payment on a home or investing that, he decided just to blow all that money. And he did this by buying buying one ticket to the Taylor Swift concert for $1,600. And then he went to Ibiza. He spent $3,500. And now I am not against vacation. I love going on vacation. And for an international trip to Spain, $3,500 isn't actually that bad. But do not go on vacation at the expense of setting yourself up financially. Don't blow your money just because you're discouraged by the housing market. Things have a way of shaking themselves out. Stay patient. Keep your good habits. Come on. Only go on vacation if you can afford it. And I'm sorry to all the Swifties. If I ever spent $1,600 on a concert, I just feel like I'm automatically not gonna like it. I feel like I'm setting expectations way too high. And if I spend that much money, I'm just not gonna have fun. Each their own. I wouldn't buy that ticket even if I had the money. All right, and to avoid making this mistake, make sure you smash that subscribe button so that you see my future content. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next up, let's go to Lindsay and Daryl who went into credit card debt to book a last minute trip to Maui. And they did this right after Lindsay left her full-time job to be a full-time caregiver to their special needs son. And with regards to booking the trip, they said, we didn't have the money, but let's just do it anyway. And I just cannot understand that. You just made a huge life change by going down to one income, which to clarify, that could have been a great thing for you. And maybe you had to do that to take care of your son. I get it. I don't think that was the bad choice, but why would you start off that huge transition, that huge life change, by just digging yourself in a hole right out of the gates. I just don't get it, I'll never get it. All right, now let's go to John. And this one just drives me crazy, which is probably a common theme for this video. But John decided to greatly decrease his retirement contributions to afford a cross-country trip that included a $7,000 Alaskan cruise for his family. John, you're 35. You're not in your best compounding years for investing, but you still have a lot of compound interest ahead of you. This is not the time to be decreasing those investments. I'm all for treating your family. It's what everyone wants to do. They want to take their family on an incredible experience. I get that. That in and of itself is a good thing, but not at the expense of your future and your investing. Just save that cash up and just pay for it all up front. Come on. It's not that difficult. And in John's defense, we don't know how much he has saved for retirement. Maybe he's loaded, but assuming he had to dip into his retirement contributions to even pay for the trip, I'm assuming that was a bad decision. I did just see the line that this was related to a health scare. I actually totally understand that. That could be scary. That can cause you to alter your plans makes you reprioritize things a little bit better. So I'll offer him a little bit of grace there. However, not at the expense of your retirement. You gotta take care of your family. Retirement is part of that. So a little bit of grace, not that much grace. Now, John said, I just hit a point where the thing that we've been talking about, maybe hopefully doing someday, we're going to do it now. I'm not going to worry about money anymore. I don't have it in me. But I actually like the core foundation of this quote. I think that people should have an active mindset. I think they should aspire to accomplish their goals and live the life they want to. I think you should do things that make you happy, but instead of doing that at the expense of your future, make a plan step by step, accomplish those steps and do it in a place where you can actually afford it. You'll be so much happier. It will eliminate so much stress. I know that's the hard way. I know it's not easy, but I agree. I want you to do fun stuff now today, but sometimes it just takes some time. It takes some work to get there and it's going to be worth it. So I actually like the thought, but more in a positive way 
than in a negative way. And again, don't do it at the expense of your retirement. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to your spouse, and you owe it to your children to make sure that you're setting yourself up, that you can be independent, that you're not relying on anybody. That's something that you have to do. Keep them in mind as we're making decisions. Find a way to do those things in a way that you can afford it and just take care of yourself. But thanks for watching, everyone. That's gonna do it. That's the end of my rant. I'm gonna calm down now, take some deep breaths. I just want people to do what makes them happy. And I think the best way to do that is to come up with a financial plan and have the means to be able to do whatever you want. That's what I want everyone to accomplish and I wanna help people get there. Like I said, it's not the easy way. It's hard, it takes work, it also takes time. It doesn't come overnight. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this inspired you to take a more proactive approach when it comes to your finances instead of just mortgaging the future. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks everyone, I'll see you next time.